has much more chances. If they think they're going to find about 20 Earth-like planets, of course, that is assuming that every star has one. Uh, in Corot, they say they will find about one or two. But whether it's 20 or whether it's one or two, <coughs> I think the first one that basically has appears to be like ours, I think is going to be a fascinating discovery. Well, let's go further. Why is it so tricky to actually find these things? Well, that's why. That's the star, and it's glare, and it's bright. So any planet around it, it's really dim and very, very close by. So finding it is really, really tricky. So um, if you have something really, really bright, and you're trying to find something that's small next to it, what can you usually do? I don't know. Have anybody has an idea? Block the light. Excellent. Yeah, so you basically block the light. It's like me standing here. I'm blocking the light of the LCD, and now you can't see anything anymore. But that's basically what we do up in space. We have a big telescope, and we use a mask that blocks out the starlight. And this is how we find these tiny, small planets next to it. In the infrared, we do it in the thermal emission, where the warmth of the planet is actually what we detect. We do the same thing that's a bit more complicated. It's called interferometry. But so basically, in the visible, we just add a mask to block out the star. In the infrared, we do this very fancily by combining the light of two telescopes that also blocks out the light of one point in the sky. What's the star? And I just wanted to show you something to put this in context. And it's a very complicated graph, so don't worry about it. But basically, what it shows you here is the intensity of the, of the star. So how many photons we get from, one, from the star? At a different wavelength, as you know, around here is where we see the optical. Around here is where you can see the infrared, the warmth emitted from a body. And what you see is that the blue line here is our Earth, and the red line is the star. What you see that in these two regions, this is the infrared, mid-infrared, where we just detect the warmth of the body. You get 10 million photons from the star one photon from the Earth. So what you need to do is to really block out this light perfectly. It's not perfectly, but at least perfectly, as good as you can get it. And actually in the visible, so where our eyes are most sensitive to, you actually have 10 billion photons from the star, while you get one photon from the planet. And this sounds really, really scary, but the mm -hmm. weird thing is actually, we have done this, we've shown this in labs, at the Czech Propulsion Laboratory in California, for example, at Princeton, at the European side, what they show is that they can actually do this. They haven't shown it for the whole bandwidth yet, so they can do it for uh, a laser, and they can show it. They can do it for, um, for let's say, from the blue to the red, not from uh, from the blue to the green, not from the blue to the red yet, but they can do it for parts of, of this window. So we're looking at. But it looks very promising, and in uh, two or three years, and we actually going to be demonstrating that this is not a problem at all. I'd say one year, but until the papers are written up, it always takes another year. <laughs> well, anyway, what are we looking for? We're looking for biomarkers, and this is where the whole thing, for me at least, starts to become exciting. So they are already finding these planets that are huge. Now, about three weeks ago, we found a planet that's actually five times our own Earth. So potentially, it could have an atmosphere that actually could sustain us. So if you wanted a fancy vacation, you know, if you weren't worried about <coughs> going to the Cape anymore, if you wanted to go to another system, this is what they were trying to sell us on. But like, you know, this is the system you want to go to. And I'm just going to show you in a bit that maybe you shouldn't really put your chips in for that trip yet. But I also show you how difficult it actually is to figure out something to make a weather forecast, basically, on a planet over there where we're not even sure whether it's raining here tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but basically what we're doing, uh, again, what can we look for? If we have this planet, we know where we're looking. We're looking in thermal infrared or in the visible where our eyes are sensitive because it's the easiest to actually look. And so what is there that could be interesting? And you see in the thermal emission, so where you only discover the heat from the body, you have carbon dioxide, 
We all know that that's what the greenhouse warming is from. The greenhouse warming is coming from water, water vapor in the atmosphere. Ozone, we have a nice ozone layer and we really want to keep it. And then some methane and N2O. In the optical, we basically again have water, ozone, oxygen. And then if it's a lot of it, methane and CO2. Again, the CO2 tells us that there's warming going on, like the greenhouse warming here on Earth. Water tells us there's water on the surface. That's something that we really want to know because so far we only know about life that actually started in the ocean. Ozone will be nice because it tells you that there's oxygen and that we potentially could be able to breathe there. And methane is nice because a lot of the bacteria in the beginning produce that as a waste product. So it kind of gives you an idea whether there's biological activity on there. Well, the science of light. And this is now what we can look for and one, one then what we can interpret. Uh, so we have the optical. We said oxygen, ozone, water, carbon dioxide, <coughs> methane, and nitrous oxide. And also what we can see in the visible is if it's a really good day and no clouds out, we could see something that indicates vegetation. Actually, we could see plants on this planet. What's very, very tricky is I'm going to show you, but it's potentially doable. So you see, this is what we can actually see in the spectrum. This is what we can see in the fingerprint of a planet when we collect this light. And this is what we interpret. We say vegetation, ooh, there should be plants. We say water, OK, that's slated for life. Ozone, that comes from oxygen, so we could breathe. And then nitrous oxide is actually a very interesting one. You can only see this in the thermal infrared. But here on Earth, 99% of it is only produced by bacteria. So this are the things we're actually looking for, things that we cannot come up with being produced abiotically. Because the tricky thing you always have is to then say, this is definitely biology of life. Because there's always some thought that nature could actually make oxygen, for example, without using any animals or bacteria. Uh, OK, this is not going to tell you so much, but what I wanted to show you here is that this is our sample of stars. I should have put it on a star map, and I apologize for that. But most of these stars <coughs> are stars you guys see every day. Because where we're looking is the closest we can. We want to look at the stars that are closest by, because that means we get more signal from the planet because they're close by and we uh, and the light is not so diluted because the light gets lost when it goes further and further away, right? And so all these stars that we're going to look for for our planets are within 75 light years. So the majority of these stars actually is the ones you are going out and looking at every other day if you're not looking for a really sophisticated telescope. Well, now let's go into the fun of it, so habitable planets. So now we could be making something up that would actually be fun, but we decided we're just going to work with the one example we have. That's Earth. Uh, and so let's start with a part of the puzzle. And I came across this animation, and now I need Ricky to be my mouse and actually click on this thing, please. He agreed to that beforehand, so. Is this going to work? I'm sorry, could you could you kindly raise your voice just a little, please? Of course. Thank you. Oh, no, no. 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 That's okay. You no. just have to click on it. Let me just... Oh. Yes. It's all right. Just on this and click on it. So what I wanted to show you here is this is an actual movie. Messenger took this movie when it flew by the Earth. So what it basically did, it made... <coughs> images of the Earth when it started to move away. Messenger is a mission that flew to Mercury. And when I saw this picture, here you see we're moving away from our own pale blue dot, dot, from our planet. It's not fiction anymore. Even so, we had no astronauts on there. We're actually taking this first step. We're moving away and we're looking at this planet from afar, at our planet from afar and figure out what somebody else would see if they look at us. And that's what we have to look for if we want to find other planets like ours. And this is another image.